my name is hold on. My name is CV Akota. Uh, I'm the host of uh, today's meeting. Mm -hmm. Today's meeting will be uh, yes, hearing from my guy MK Siri. And the subject of this discussion is uh, Biafra, how to use our customary laws to achieve self-determination part two. Uh, today is the continuation of the uh, initial meeting we held last, we had uh, last week, Saturday. So he's going to talk to us about to how to use the uh, Southeast customary laws to achieve uh, self-determination for Biafra. Uh, but it's America, you have the floor now to start speaking. Thank you, moderator C.V. Akuta. Um, yeah, this is the continuation of the lecture we've been ha having. Uh, I am a Mecca MK Siri, as I told you before. I'm from Amocha, you know, Olu, precisely from Okwarunebu village in Amocha, Olu, in Imo State, uh, presently in Njaba local government area. So we want to talk about the customary laws, our customary laws, and how to use our customary laws to achieve self-determination. <clears throat> now, let me ask you a question and maybe pose this question to your mind as we progress. Assuming that Nigeria breaks down or breaks up yeah, this they, 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 they uh, someone is uh, um, someone is uh, interfering. Now, yeah, assuming, Nigeria, assuming Nigeria breaks down this night or breaks up and there is um, social cataclysm, anarchy everywhere, um, breakdown, law and order, and um, you know, the, the situation is so much that you cannot control the system, cannot control the site anymore. The question is this, who will gather us together? Under what structure, governmental structure, can we be gathered together? Assuming something happens to Nigeria this night. Yeah, we may say nothing will happen, nothing will happen, but suppose something happens. Suppose this night we go in to sleep, by tomorrow morning you hear some noise, you hear some sound and the, everywhere is in chaos breakdown of law and order, anarchy, every institution collapses. What shall we do? Who will gather us together? Under what, under what structure shall we be gathered together? Yeah, you, you see, you need to think of this thing. The way Nigeria is now, the situation in Nigeria now, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And if anything happens in a dangerous way, as I've just described now, shall we become like sheep without a shepherd? We shall, shall we become like sheep without a shepherd? And then anarchy will reign in the land and the various factions of Biafran movement will be killing themselves like court, rival court gangs and killing themselves and spilling blood all over the place because there's no structure to gather you together. It is very serious you think about this. If there is anarchy and the breakdown of law and order in Nigeria, social revolution or cataclysm, who will gather us together under what structure, governmental structure? Because at that moment, there will be no more Parliament to make law, no more government, no more state government, no more legislature, no more judiciary, everything collapses. Who will gather us together under what structure? I want you to continue to think about this as we continue this lecture. It is better for a wise man to prepare ahead of time. The Igbo people have an adage that onye ngoro, that aya nehevi onye, aya karaka, if a war has been determined, as a date has been set for war to start, a cripple will know how to get to safety before the war starts. It appears that our people are not even getting ready for what is ahead. Anything that, the dangerous thing that may happen. Okay, so I want you to start thinking along that line as we continue with this. In the last lecture, we mentioned the 
um, pillars of Nigerian legal system, where we talked about the, the, the four sources of Nigerian law, we talked about the received English law, the statute law, the case law, and customary law slash uh, Sharia law. Of course, you know the received English law. Nigeria still practices some aspects of English law. The statute law means all the laws made by the parliament, whether the federal parliament or the state parliament, house of assembly or national assembly. That is statute law. Case law is the what we call is case law. That's what we call the judges made law. That is the laws that emanate from decisions of the superior courts of record, like a court of appeal and supreme court. There are some decisions that are made by the court, which we now call uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, precedent. That is judicial precedent. Uh, uh, we, we call it judicial precedent. It sets a precedent, and we cannot rely upon the decisions of the court for other issues, similar matters. So you hear us quoting law in the case of Chief Okafo versus uh, Chief um, um, Onjoko. That thing we quote is law. It's called case law uh, with judicial precedent. So uh, it is part of Nigerian law using case law. Then we now have the customary law or Sharia law. And I've told you that under the Nigerian hierarchy of laws, the Sharia law and customary law are at par. So these four pillars of Nigerian law or foundations upon which you can build any structure in Nigeria remain valid and therefore you can establish anything in nigeria using one or more of these four foundations these four uh, sources of nigerian law you can use any one of them and establish any structure and it is valid under the nigerian law so when we entered into the biafra struggle we said we are going to use the nigerian law and the nigerian law we have in mind is the customary law and any other law, whether statute law or case law or receive English law, that is in line with the vision of self-determination. And that's what we are doing. So we now come to understand that there is a structure we can build using customary law. Customary law has customary courts that administer customary law. The earliest statute created for administration of customary law was the Imo State Customary Law Edict of 1984, which applies to the old Imo State now including Abia State and some and the uh, Ebony State. Uh, Ebony State, uh, Abia State, they have also made their laws now. Ebony State made the uh, Ebony State customary law number one of 2001. And Abia State also made Abia State uh, customary law amendment law 2011. Now, these laws create created um, rights and obligations um, under customary law and gave powers, uh, jurisdictions to the courts to administer justice according to the law. Okay, but now what I would like to read out what the court, the court decide, defines as customary law. And then we will, we will do something else. Uh, we, it says customary law, section two. Section two of the customary law edict says, customary law means a rule or body of customary rules regulating rights and imposing correlative duties being customary rule or body of customary rules which obtains and is fortified by established usage and which is appropriate and applicable to any particular cause, matter, dispute, issue, or question. Then part, part four, part five, section 16.1, tells us that the customary court 
shall administer the customary law prevailing in the area of jurisdiction of the court or binding upon any of the parties so far as it is not repugnant to natural justice equity and good conscience or incompatible either directly or by necessary implication with any written law for the time being enforced in the state so we may have to explain this that the customary court shall administer justice over causes or matters so far as the law the customary practice is not repugnant to natural justice equity and good conscience so far anything you are doing which you call customary law practice is not repugnant to natural justice equity and good conscience what does this mean? Now, the law says that the customary court can administer justice on every aspect of our activities, so long as that aspect of customary law is not repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. Now, we know that culture, from our study in sociology, culture is dynamic so customary laws that is the customs and traditions of the people which crystallize into a form of practice over usage crystallizing into form of law can be in fact are dynamic in nature because people change their ways of life adopt new ways of life now the law says that any law that is not repug any customary practice or customary law that is not repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience shall be upheld, and the law and the court has jurisdiction to entertain and adjudicate over those matters. Now, what are the issues or what are the rules or practices that may be considered repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience? We have seen that in the Igbo customary law, for instance, the, the issue of Osu or Ume. Now the courts will set aside and, uh, and uh, abolish such. If you bring such matters before the court, they are not going to entertain it. They are going to set it aside. They are going to declare it null and void. Every other practice that is, that is just, justified, that is in accordance with natural justice, equity and good conscience, the court will uphold it. In, 20, in 2014, on 14th of April 2014, 14th of April 2014, the Supreme Court overruled the Igbo customary law of inheritance, where the Igbo customary law says a woman should not inherit the estate of her late father because she's a woman. She should not participate in the inheritance of the estates of her late father. That is Igbo customary law, but the Supreme Court say it is repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience, because it is discriminatory, contrary to Section 42 of the Nigerian Constitution. Is it because she's a woman, therefore she will not participate in, in uh, inheritance, the sharing the assets of the father, because she's a woman. So that aspect of customary law, the Supreme Court declared it null and void. So this is an example of what we mean by any practice that is incompatible or that is repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. Now we come to, to customary governance because we are talking about how to use customary law to achieve self-determination. And I have posed a question when I started. I posed the question. Assuming Nigeria breaks up now, there is social cataclysm, anarchy, that the breakdown of law and order. Suppose it happens tomorrow morning. Who will gather us together? Under what structure? Under what governmental structure shall we be gathered together? Shall we be scattered like sheep without a shepherd? Or shall the different um, groups, all the factions, begin to fight among themselves and kill themselves 
like court gangs and the rival courts and butchering themselves and killing themselves uh, 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 for power. You can see that if such a thing happens, if such a thing happens and we don't have a structure that will hold the people together, there will be problem in our land. There will be problem in our land. Therefore, it is better we get ready and organize ourselves. People seeking for independence must first be organized as a people. If you want independence, you must first be organized as a people. We have sampled opinions of Biafrans, and all of them say they want freedom. The only thing is that some say they want freedom outside Nigeria entirely, why some say they want freedom within Nigeria? All of them say they want freedom. The difference is, is it freedom within Nigeria or freedom without? That is the only difference. But whichever freedom you want, you must be organized as a people to speak with one voice for the freedom you want. That is the starting point for self-determination. Now, we don't have the statute made by the National Assembly to help us to gather ourselves. The Houses of Assembly did not make law to help us to gather ourselves. So under what law can we now use? Fortunately, fortunately, and I say fortunately, the Nigerian constitution recognizes the customary law of the land. The last time I was talking with us, I told you that there is customary arbitration, which is acceptable and in fact enforceable by the Nigerian judiciary. And I told you that even the three arms of government, which we have in the Nigerian government, the, the proper statutory government, these three arms of government also exist under customary law. And I gave you an example that under customary law, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary all operate under customary law. And I gave you an example that day that when we gather in the Amala meeting, maybe your village, you call it Amala, or you call it uh, Omunadi, or whichever name you call it, there is a village gathering where we gather together. We are summoned. In my village, we have a quick when we when the captain cry a gong, all of us will gather. And when we take decision, that decision we are taking, that the, the, the make that decision making is actually the process of making a rule. And when we finish that decision making, the head of the family, the head of the village, or the elder will, will now say, Is this what we have agreed? Have we agreed? They say yes, and then he will hit his staff. Or para or, or for on the ground and said we have agreed, and that is a law. They have made that law, and then they then any person that violates that law, they will send the executive to execute it to enforce it. And who executes it under the customary law? They use the youths or the okonko or the town or the 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 the, 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 the age grade, and enforce that decision. Good. So. You can see they do, they have the power to make uh, legislation rules and they have the power to enforce it. They also have, have the power of security, uh, which is executive function, using the youth the to secure. Good. They also have um, uh, uh, the judicial power, power of uh, judiciary, that is deciding cases, deciding cases. We, 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 we gather if somebody has a problem with the other person, a dispute, he will usually you buy wine or buy wine and go and make a complaint that this also person entered into your farmland and harvested your ogun or your cassava and that so so, -so problem then you now send a bottle or one keg of pan wine one keg of pan wine that in abonya then they, they beat the gong for you on that day there will be a decision the panel will be set to hear the cases and when they hear the cases they decide who is right and who is wrong. That is judicial function, but it's called customary arbitration. 
the only thing that they don't charge you um, on money, what they usually say is that uh, when you're coming, bring maybe when you're coming, bring um, food, uh, uh, bring wine, and bring oba, uh, 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 bring oba and oba and the keg of palm wine. This one, bring this uh, keg of palm. That's it, and they settle the case, settle the case, and they drink palm wine and eat oburuko and oba, and they go. That is dispute resolution. That is actually dispute settlement. It's actually a judicial function. We call it quasi judicial, our customary arbitration. And I told you that that customary arbitration is valid. Even if you take it to Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will confirm it and affirm it as binding. And it creates what we call res judicata. In law, it brings an extopel. We call it extopel parent judicata. In other words, you cannot reopen that case again. You cannot bring up that issue again because it is settled and settled permanently. Unless there is a very grievous injustice that will compel the Supreme Court to reopen it or the higher court to reopen it. So now we have all these systems operating. So it means that we have a structure on the ground at local level, at village level, at community level, but perhaps we don't have it at national, Igbo national level or Biafra national level. I'm going to talk about whether we're going to use the word Igbo national level or Biafra national level. I'm going to talk about it later because there are issues arising over it. But now what we are talking about is that we now have the structure on the ground. As um, the government, like in Imo state, the Imo state government may be having their meeting in the government house. It doesn't stop the village, the natives of Oren Chise. It doesn't stop them from gathering in that their village meeting and making decisions also. They may be having a meeting. It doesn't stop my village, Okwaru Nebu village, from having their, our own meeting and deciding cases and moving forward. So you can see that there are there, there's, there are two parallel parallel governments going on. The statutory government established under the Nigerian law, the constitution and all the laws. And there is the customary government, which is unwritten and uh, moving at parallel, parallel with the other government. Now, question. If Nigeria breaks down and there is no statutory government, no governor again, no commission again, no president again, what shall we do? Will it be community? Would there be community clashes? Community fighting against community? Groups fighting against groups? Or the Igbo versus Ijo? Or what? How shall we be organized? Now, in the first lecture of so, I said that communities, communities are organic creations. The people are organic creations, separate from nation states. Nigeria may cease to exist, but the people remain. Nigeria may cease to exist, but the people themselves will remain. The states created by Nigeria may cease to exist, but the natural communities and villages will remain. Now, the states were created by Nigerian constitution. For instance, the states we have now, the 36 states, are created under section three, under section three of the constitution. All the states in Nigeria were created under section three. If Nigeria breaks down and the, and the constitution is pulled down, there will be no more states. Of course, you know that. You know that there are some different activists who are working towards pulling down this constitution. They're working towards pulling down the constitution. They said Nigerian constitution is fraudulent and defective and is invalid. And therefore, they will do everything possible to pull it down. OK, that is very good. They, they, they have a concept of force majeure. Force majeure, they call it constitutional force majeure. Force majeure is a French word, French phrase, meaning major force. Major force, in law, we say it is an act of God. 
an act of God that frustrates a contract. This constriction is a social contract between the government and the electorate. So it's a contract between us and the government. And just like every other contract, the force majeure can frustrate a contract. What do I mean by that? If you enter into a contract now with a builder, an architect or engineer to build a house for you, and in the course of it, there was an earthquake or thunder or lightning or whatever, or storm that destroys the building or destroys the land and makes it impossible to perform the contract, then that contract is frustrated. And you cannot sue the engineer. You cannot sue the architect or the builder. You cannot sue because it was an act of God that frustrated the performance of the contract. So the people who are trying to pull down the constitution, they, are, they, are trying, they will use the act of God, the force majeure, that will make it impossible to perform the, this constitution. So if that happens, you cannot arrest any person, you cannot sue any person, who can say it is the act of God that caused the constitution to fail. And once this constitution is pulled down, Nigeria collapses. Everything collapses. No more army, no police, no parliament, no state, no local government. Everything created by this constitution will collapse. No courts, nothing will remain. Nigeria will be anarchy everywhere. If such a thing happens, what structure shall hold us? It's unimaginable what will happen because there is no alternative structure. Somebody will kill you. There's no police to arrest you, to arrest the, pe the person. Somebody will harm you or steal, steal your goods. No police to arrest because there's no more police. Anything can happen. There's no more order or call order, no orderliness again. What will happen? And uh, our customary government structure may not be strong enough, may not yet have become strong enough to carry the structure, to carry the people. That's why we have to do something immediately before it gets too bad. We don't know tomorrow. The Igbo people say, Onye Mechi, who knows tomorrow? We don't know yet. The people who are saying they will pull down this constitution, we don't know how they're going to do it, but they may succeed. If they succeed and Nigeria falls, crumbles tonight, who shall gather us together? You see, and when they are saying that they will use that method to put down the constitution, um, I, I say let them go ahead. It is good. And if they, if, they, if they can do it, let them do. Even if I doubt the possibility, they may have their secret weapon or method of doing it, which I may not know. But my own concern is, Assuming it happens, what shall we do? Who will gather us together? Under what governmental structure? Shall we be left like sheep without shepherds and we begin to kill ourselves? You can see so many Biafran activists, so many groups right at the moment that is attacking themselves and uh, in fact, some are kidnapping themselves and harming themselves, doing so many things. Imagine what it will be if such a thing happens and there is no regulatory authority, no governmental structure that can bring discipline among the people, it will be horrible. Therefore, it is better we get prepared now before it is too late. So I've mentioned about, are we going to be gathered together as the Igbo nation or as Biafran people? Now, some people, you know, we are moving together. This struggle for self-determination, we are carrying all the geopolitical zones along. If you, if you remember our prayer number six, number six and seven of our originating summons in the case between Biafra and Nigeria presently in court, we said that we want the court to make an order reversing the amalgamation of 1914 so that the people will go back to their status quo, to their position status quo, and before that amalgamation. Or in the alternative, 
to convoke, to make another convoking national conference for the ethnic nationalities to come and discuss and agree on their terms of cohabitation, being together. That is prayer number six. Then prayer number seven say, we are asking the court to make an order directing the first defender, that's the federal government of Nigeria, the president, to, pro, to present an executive bill to the National Assembly for a law restructuring Nigeria into six self-governing regions, autonomous regions, six of them, South, East, South, South, Southwest, North, East, North, Central, Northwest, the six geopolitical regions to become independent, self-governing. That is, or in the alternative, we now say in the alternative, if Nigeria does not want to restructure this country into self-governing regions, then let, let the president present a bill to dissolve Nigeria in peace and let every person go back to his father's land if they don't want. Now, restructuring to regional government is the minimum we will accept. If not, then Nigeria should disintegrate. That's what we are saying. It's either Nigeria accepts to restructure the country to regional government so that every region will govern itself in the one Nigeria, or if they refuse, then let Nigeria disintegrate. But we are saying, let it disintegrate peacefully by dissolution, just like uh, USSR was dissolved peacefully. USSR was dissolved by law peacefully. Every person went back to his father's land. So Nigeria can also be dissolved peacefully if they don't want to restructure. Dissolve, and let's go back to where we were before 1914, if you don't want to restructure. After all, before 1914, we were somewhere. We had our land. So we are, we are saying um, this is the this is the will of the people, restructured in Nigeria. I, I got, um, I, I heard the, about the, the suit filed by the leaders of the four regions, um, the present suit uh, by uh, um, Edwin Clark, uh, Chief Edwin Clark and, um, and others against President of Nigeria. That is the suit. So I was able to get the originating summons, which they filed. I must tell you that when I went through this, when I went through this, I, I felt disappointed. With all due respect to the senior advocates of Nigeria who filed this case, I, I felt disappointed because the issues they raised and the prayers they sought for uh, did not align with the will of the people. They are talking about marginalization and all those things, the injustice they are. Nigerian government um, is um, meeting out against us, denying us of rights and so on. And then asking the court to make an order directing Nigerian government to revert uh, or reverse the errors or correct the errors and uh, the, all the things and as well as pay them compensation of about 50 billion, half billion for what? Is that what we're asking for? That is not this, the, the, what we want. I read through it and I was looking for a place that I would say an, an order, if that could be a, one of the prayers, if they would say an order directing the first defendant to present an executive bill to the National Assembly for a law restructuring the whole country to regional government so that every region will govern itself and develop at its own pace, be autonomous. You know, that is what I expected them to, 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 to do. But I didn't see it here. So I got, I, I, I got um, uh, disappointed. With all due respect to the senior advocates of Nigeria, I will advise that they should amend it. Amend your claim. It's not yet too late. It's not late. Amend your originating summons. Amend the prayer and include that prayer. Include it. And all that directing the first defendant to present an executive bill to the National Assembly for a law restructuring Nigeria to six self-governing autonomous regions. Please, the, um, the senior advocates of Nigeria who issued this uh, originating summons, I will advise you to advise your clients. 
take instructions from your client and amend it. Amend it. And if you amend it, then we may withdraw our case that is in court. Our case in the, in the court of appeal, because that is a prayer we put in our case. So if you amend your, your summons, we will, we will say that, well, and make, or we can, we can now amend our own and remove this one and pursue other issues. Because our own, we have many issues apart from that one. So let us move in the same direction. Not when we're asking for self-determination, you're asking for 50 billion naira compensation for what? And after eating 50 billion naira, what next? That is, I don't really, I don't really get it. That, that I don't really understand why they should go towards that uh, level. Well, what I'm trying to say is that all of us are pursuing self-determination. We are carrying the regions along, all of them, at, at least the four regions, the southern region and the middle belt. Now, somebody said, for us, our own region in the southeast, that we should forget the name Biafra and use the name Alibo. In fact, somebody say he should be calling indigenous people of Alibo. The other people say they should be calling indigenous people of Niger Delta. That the word Biafra is a problem. That we should forget it. Well, I want to um, make some comments on that. Another person said, um, we should not participate in Nigerian law and politics because Nigerian law is faulty or is fraudulent. I will also make a comment on this. Another person said we should not adopt the Nigerian structure of state, state, but rather we should use the Biafran structure of province. I will also make a comment on that. And that person said that Nigeria has ceased to exist after 100 years of amalgamation. Therefore, in law, there's nothing like Nigeria again. Hmm, I will also make a comment on this. Let's start with the other one, that we should forget Biafra. Now, Biafra, from the ancient map of Africa, some of you must have seen the ancient map of Africa, Biafra existed about 500 years. The Biafra existed about 500 years before Nigeria was created. You see it in the ancient map of Africa. This book, well, I wrote this book in 2012 to commence the case between Biafra and Nigeria. Now, in 1967, when the Eastern region wanted to become independent, it was Chief Frank Opigo of brass division in the present day Bayesa state that gave that name Biafra and suggested it that it should be used as the name for their region. Now, at that time, they had the um, Nigerian constitution which created regions. I have the Nigerian 1963 constitution with me here. The, Nigerian, the 1963 constitution of Nigeria. Okay, that is here, it's here. Sorry, I have many. That is the Nigerian Constitution of 1963. This Nigerian Constitution of 1963 embodies the three constitutions for the three regions. Now, these three regions, the Eastern region, the Northern region, and the Western region, constituted the whole Federal Republic of Nigeria. Each region had its own constitution and its own regional parliament. Now, it was the Eastern Nigeria Regional Parliament and Eastern Nigerian Consultative Assembly that mandated their, their governor, Colonel Odmego Juku, to now declare their region independent by that name, Biafra, which uh, Chief Franco Pigo of ba Brass in the present day Bayesa state. Uh, suggested and they adopted it and uh, they went and they declared the Republic of Biafra okay Republic of Biafra 
started in, in, uh, became became alive. Nigeria um, uh, uh, declared war against Biafra, and Biafra fought. Well, you know the story of the war. And um, five countries recognized the Biafra. Tanzania, Haiti, Ivory Coast, uh, uh, Gabon, uh, um, Zambia recognized Biafra. And by the rule of international law, Biafra had succeeded. You know, it had a defined territory, it had population, it had um, a de facto government, and um, it, it has recognition by other countries that have sit in the United Nations. So, automatic. So by right, Biafra should be granted a seat in the United Nations. But the world powers, the big world powers, denied Biafra of that right. I have, I have written about it that it was injustice occasioned by the big power, the world powers, because Biafra had fulfilled the, fulfilled the requirements of international law and kept the government for three years. If even if it's one year, even if it's one year de facto governance, you are entitled to sovereignty. But the big world powers denied us that. So we have to re-strategize now. That was why I was telling that we have to re-strategize. So there is international politics that has to be played, and we have to play it. So now somebody said we should forget the name Biafra. I don't think we should forget that name. Because that name is a name for which millions of people have died. And again, in international law, there's something we call balance of power. In international relations, international law, there's something we call balance of power. I will tell you that Biafra is our own masquerade, okay, more, that keeps Nigerian government restless and gives them sleepless nights that is our bargaining power biafra when you shout biafra they become afraid let us continue shouting biafra until they do something about it of course every person has the right to answer whatever he wants to answer that is a fortune, a very beautiful thing a region can decide to answer biafra in fact i can change my surname to biafra any person can answer any name he wants to answer. There's no law stopping you from answering Biafra. In fact, I can even advise now that to all the Biafras, when you have anything now, name after Biafra, either put a prefix or suffix. Biafra, Dimma, Biafra Gadi, when you give, a, a, when you give birth to a child, call him Biafra Maka. Yes, yeah, some people say Biafra Maka. Yeah, it becomes Biafra Maka. You can, you can put Biafra in your name, either prefix or suffix. Nobody stops you from answering Biafra. So continue. In fact, right now, if you make uh, your goods, say made by Bia a Biafra, what is wrong with that? It's made by a Biafra. The only thing you cannot say, Republic of Biafra. The Republic has ceased to exist. But we, the Biafras, are still alive. That brings me to the next issue. They said that, um, we should continue using the, the province which Biafra created instead of using states. No. All the structures created by the Biafran parliament, the provinces created by the Biafran parliament ceased to exist when the sovereignty was dissolved. But there's nothing wrong with us using the states that are created under the Nigerian law. But I have told you that those states are artificial creation. But the communities, the villages, the communities are natural organisms created by God. That even if the states are dissolved, the communities remain. So you can see that we have to target the communities now. That is the reason our town hall meetings, the customary government town hall meeting goes down to the communities, to the wards, local government and communities, go to the basics, to the foundation, the grassroots. It's important that we do that. So 
we will not forget the name of Biafra. We will not oppose Nigerian sovereignty. We will operate as Biafras living in Nigeria. Those who said there's nothing like Nigeria, they are either they don't want to accept the truth or they are living in some delusion. Those who said Nigeria ceased, they ceased to exist after 100 years, either they are confused or they are deceived or they intentionally decide not to accept the truth, the reality on the ground. There is a country called Nigeria, and we are citizens of Nigeria. Whether we, it is by force, by compulsion, we have been forced to become citizens of Nigeria. There's nothing you can do about it until you get independence. It's not, it's a, it, it, it is even in history. If you remember when the Israelites were taken into Egypt and they became slaves in Egypt, all of them that were born there, they were all Egyptians. They remained in Egypt for 430 years, remember? They were born in Egypt from generation to generation, generation to generation. They were born as Egyptians. In fact, they spoke Egyptian language, they dressed like Egyptians, they did everything like Egyptians, but they kept their indigenous identity intact as Israelites as Jews. And their fathers passed the message to them from generation to generation, say, in the Egypt, you are Israelites. We shall go. One day we shall go. Pass this message to your children. And let the children pass the message to their children until the day God will visit you and then give you deliverance. If in fact, Joseph, before he died, prophesied. Joseph, when, before he died, prophesied that, listen, no, God will visit you people and take you out from Egypt. And when that happens, when you are going, take my bones from the grave. Take my bones and take my bones along with you and bury me, bury my bones in the land which God has given to us. Now, Emeka. Hello, Emeka. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes, I can. I'm. I'm asking you uh, the time to round off for questions. I don't know whether it's the time now because. Um, okay, we're almost just in, in, a, an in hour. a few. In a few minutes. In a few minutes, I will round off. In a few minutes, I will round off. So what I'm saying is this: they maintain their indigenous identity, yet they remain as Egyptians until the day of their deliverance. So also we, Biafrans. We maintain our indigenous identity as Biafrans living in Nigeria until the day we shall be free. While we are struggling for independence, we, shall, we have to be organized as a people. In 2016, the president of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, directed us that we should organize ourselves, organize ourselves and vote to have a state within a state to have Biafra state within Nigerian state. That's what he said. The question is, organize yourself. Have you organized yourself? My answer is yes, we have organized ourselves because we have put the structure in place. I will take questions. Maybe as I, as I take the answers to the, as I give answers to the questions, I will now tell you how we are organized because the moderator has given me uh, a sign that um, um, time is up. So we are organized. Last week, I showed you the deed poll of customary governance, which is registered under the Nigerian law. I don't know whether you saw it. That is the deed poll. The deed poll of customary governance, registered under the Nigerian law, by which we are organized. So you can ask your questions, and I will expatiate as we go forward. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yes, you can ask your question. Ask your questions. I can't hear you. 
Yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, my name is Uche Oguike, Dr. Uche Oguike. My question is very simple. Yes. Uh, one, why are we struggling for restructuring of Nigeria into six geopolitical regions? Why can we not concentrate on getting our own area to be an autonomous region within Nigeria? Why are we bothering with what the northern areas or other areas want to do or how they will organize themselves? We should leave this idea of six structures and concentrate on having our own region structured in the way we want it. I think that's one of the impediments to this idea of restructuring Nigeria. Okay. Let me, let me ask... Okay, second question, go ahead. Yeah, second, just briefly. If indeed Biafra was recognized by five countries, then is there no way we can revisit that route internationally because it had been recognized before? Is there no way we can explore that recognition that was achieved then? Okay. Thank you. All right, let me attack the two questions now. The first one is, why are we carrying all the regions along instead of concentrating on our own? That is correct. Good. Yeah. Um, you know that we decided that it was actually decided in 1994 during the Mpokibo conference. Yes. Be before the 1995 uh, uh, Bacha conference. Yes. yes. Good. The Igbo intelligentsia brought out the Aburi Accord and looked at it and analyzed it and said, why did it fail? And they found out that why it failed was that other regions took side with Nigerian government and persecuted us and made sure that we did not succeed. They felt that it's better you give them their own autonomy. The people we call South South now, they were saying that we were dominating them. Yeah. The people we call Middle Belt now, they were being used by North against us. In fact, during the war, it was Middle Belt people that fought the battle. That is correct. <laughs> Good. So the Igbo intelligentsia said, okay. These people, these are our brethren from River Rhine who feel that we are persecuting them or dominating them. Now, let us give them a separate identity so that they will no longer fear domination. And then the Middle Belt people also, let them also have their own so that they will no longer be used by North against us. So it was the Igbo intelligentsia that created the six regional structure. And it was presented by Dr. Alex Ekweme. The two lieutenants on his side, De uh, Sambakwe and Ojuku. Uh, and it was perfect. They accepted it. And all the, all the tribes, all the regions were happy that, okay, so that it will no longer be only for the Igbo region. At least they have their own identity. They were happy. But suppose we went only for ourselves. They will say, oh, it is, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, 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 we are selfish. So now, Every region now gets their own allocation according to their region. In fact, they even, their own region is even better than our own because their regions, they have more senatorial seats than our own region. So we, you can see that the Igbo man wants fairness for everybody. But like you said, it may it actually, I think it has come to the point where we now struggle for ourselves. I forget. I, I agree with you. Maybe that's why one of the persons said that we should forget Biafra and say a Republic of Alibo. <laughs> maybe. I, I, maybe that's what made him to say, let's forget others and fight for ourselves. But we shall do our best. We shall do our best to carry every person along. But where it's not possible, we go for ourselves. I agree with you, my brother. Uh -huh. Then the second, your second question, what is it again? I said... Biafra achieved recognition by five countries. Fine. That is correct. Now, you said, is it not possible to revisit it? My brother, it is. Because okay. as far as I know, 
those five countries did not withdraw their recognition up to today. That's correct. In fact, I may have to say it now. I represented the Biafrans in 2014 at the AU meeting in Nairobi, Kenya. And the, the person that was the head of African Union at that time, he, he took a copy of this, my book, Biafra or Nigerian Presidency, what the Igbos want. And we had a discussion. And he's from Zambia. And he said that they, they are in support of Biafra, that we should bring our case to the African Union and let it be debated. That is correct. I agree. Unfortunately, when I came back home, the Biafran activists working here, they frustrated me, they kicked, they destroyed everything we built with propaganda. And right now, that man, the head of African Union, who discussed with me in 2004, is no longer there now. We missed that opportunity. But, but one thing is this, we can revisit it. We can visit all those countries. By the way, by the way, Ever since after the war, have our elders constituted a body to pay visit to all the countries? Yes. To say thank you to Tanzania, government of Tanzania, yes. government of Zambia, government of Ivory Coast, government of Gabon, and Haiti. Did yes. our elders send people to say thank you? Yes. That is the reason you should be organized as a people to know what to do next. I remember that Dr. Dozi Kedife and the elders, the Supreme Council of Elders, they sent delegation to Gabon, you know, a few years ago. But we need to do more. Of course, you know that the, 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 president, the president of Gabon right now is a Biafran child. Yes. Good. It was one of those children that, that, that were evacuated. A case came up when he won the election. A case came up. They, they stood against him and I said that, that he's not a Gabonese, that he's a, 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 he's a foreigner. But the law, the law says when you adopt a child, the law of adoption means that that child is your child and has the right to inherit from you. That's the law. So, the, he defeated them, his father adopted him, and by the law, he is the son of the, of the family. So we have not done much. You, 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 you are, you are, you are, your suggestion is very good, you, are, you know. It's necessary we revisit, we have to pay visit to all those countries and speak to them. And hopefully something good will come out of it. I hope but, so. but then we have to be organized. We have to be organized. Because when you go, they'll ask you, who sent you? <laughs> who sent you? <laughs> so it is the elders of the land. And the, I want to make another statement, which is very obvious. By customary law of governance, it is the elders of the land that have the right to organize their children gather their children, advise their children, discipline their children, and oversee the affairs of their children. That is under customary law of governance. Just like a family, a head of a family has right to organize his children. So also the head of a clan or village or community, the, the elders have the right to organize their children together. So this is where the elders of Biafra land came in in 2012 to gather us together, headed by his lordship, his majesty, honorable justice, as is late now. He's late. Yes, the he's elders late. that came up. This was the vision. That was the vision. So your question and your observation is excellent, my brother. I think it is something we have to work on. Um, but we have to be organized so that when we go, they will ask, if they ask us who sent us, we will tell them who sent us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question? 
Any other question, please raise your hand and then I will give you microphone to speak to Baris. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, what is your name and where you're calling from? Who is speaking? It's like there's no other question. Somebody wanted to ask some questions. Is it a ZG? Well, well, if there's no other question, that means we we'll summarize and close. Is there a question? No, hang on. Somebody is trying to raise his hand up. Just one minute before you before we we'll get to. Just hold on. Because I muted everyone. If you have yeah. any question to ask, just raise your hand up and then I will give you uh, audience and or microphone. I will ask you to unmute before you can. Um... Ameka, please, could you, while we are waiting for people to raise their hand, could you maybe talk more on your meeting at AU when you went to represent uh, uh, Biafra? How did it go? My brother, before he goes in. Hello. 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 Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you. What's your name? Where, where are you calling from, please? Okay. I'm from Franklin. I'm Pastor Franklin. Okay, Franklin. You're welcome. Okay. Uh huh. Um, thank you for this occasion. Um, uh, as an elder. Um, can we see a video, please? Eh? Sorry? Can we see a video, please? I don't know how, I'm old school, I don't know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> so, my brother, Archip Salam, I'm going to go to night school. Say with um, me, say with me, I can do all things through Christ who sentences me. Uh, start my video. I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to work. All right, I'm going to go to work. 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 Like, uh, I don't know who motivates you or what uh, encourages you, but I don't envy you, but well done. That's number one. <laughs> Thank you. Number two, um, uh, and I'm here to 60 years. And, so, um, you, you, my junior. Uh, I won't junior again, but they want no. He had to <laughs> but I'm looking for a diplomatically uh, acceptable way to say it is that um, if a house is divided, yeah, it's always very difficult to achieve the mission. Yeah. So much as we are calling elders, 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 um, um, if there is a point, a meeting point for the elders to come together, that would be very good. And for the rest of us uh, that have come out of um, Igbo land and have seen both sides of um, contraptions, and we know the right thing to do, but we just don't think it's worth our while to lose our life like other people lost their life. But you that has chosen to do this, this is why I'm saying thank you. So, I'm going to go to the office and I'm going to This idea of um, having negative press about the, the purpose of the Roma, it's, it's, it's disheartening. So, if you have to go through, look at all the well-meaning intentions you have now. Look at what Dr. Gike just said. These are very simple things to do where the house is in order. So why not start from the elders? Get everybody to speak with one voice. Yes? Get the purpose, get the agenda sold to the rest of us. Because it's like onion and milk and bottle is the person I know. No matter how well meaning your ideas or efforts are, is going to be drowned by opinions that will not achieve the purpose. 
So now that you have you have been in this race for the longest time, and you've seen the frustration attached to it, please, why not, Animas? Is it possible to go back to the elders, bridge all the necessary differences, so that you can speak with one voice, so that the purpose, the mission, will be accomplished? And wait timetable for the accomplishment. If you are giving your project one year. Let the elders who are supposed to lead as I to in a quote to customary, as the custom of Ali is concerned, get that area organized. Galvanize the, the people that you need to help you. But you can see that some of us are waiting for only Obanamwalu program, agenda that we can buy into. You've spoken now, very simple. If a doctor be careful, absolute spot on. But now we are looking for who is going to get the elders to speak for us. So that the image, right now, the image is what is destroying the, the construct. The yeah. name Biafra is not the issue. The image we are attaching to Biafra is making nonsense of everybody's effort. Your yeah. effort, Nam uh, Dekano's effort, no matter how way meaning it is, if you in this world, I know now, it's all about image. Yeah. But the image there is a divided image. Yes, the image is there is that only apart from so the other. Are you stopping me? Uh, who is who is who is making noise? So I am saying, Biko, get the elders in place. The purpose is good. The intention is good. Stop the bad press. Stop the divided, at, uh, divided uh, di stop the rot and stop the division. Whoever you go to, if you go to Tanzania now, go to Gambia, go to Ivory Coast, Will they still give you that audience that is okay. deserving because, okay. because of the noise that they make? That's a good question. Um, the first country that invited us for a discussion, even though they did not recognize us during the Biafran War, it was um, Australia, Australia government that invited mm -hmm. us first. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is their. <clears throat> this is one sent to Australia government on 19th of March 2013, when they invited us. This was signed by uh, uh, Justice Ezo Zobu, and we sent delegates to Australia. Um, five five delegates to discuss with Australian government. That was the first journey, first delegation by our elders to discuss with another country. And they invited us as Biafrans. That would have continued by 2014. We now wrote to the British government. Oh, that, no, 2014, yeah, we wrote to both British government and Germany. This is the chancellor. The Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Berlin, 4th July 2014. Then, December 2014, we wrote to the British government. Unfortunately, the thing that happened in the Biafra struggle, which all of you must have had, a lot of things disturbed the progress. It's like we are starting afresh. It's like we are starting afresh. So, let's forget the past and try to rebuild. But a lot of things went wrong. So um, the, those elders that were in the forefront doing this thing, those elders were destroyed and castigated and in fact rubbished and so on and so forth. So, but we are now building up again. And those elders, most of them are dead, but they transferred powers before dying. So there are still the elders that are working continuing from where those other people stopped. So what you said is very important. 
We have to go back to drawing board. In fact, after this meeting, I'll call some of them. Then we'll go back and then we we'll start because they need to give you authorization to go and discuss with the government of Sierra, of uh, maybe Zambia or Tanzania. Uh -huh. So when you go, you bring a document and say, and give to them and say, our elders, you're welcome, sir. Say, our elders have sent us to, uh, to appreciate we don't need, we don't really your help in the time of our sufferings. Then from there, discussion will start. So we need to. Fortunately, by the grace of God, our customary law is intact. And our customary law gives our elders the right to organize us as a people and, you know, and guide us while we are still in Nigeria. So uh, your, your suggestion is very important and we have to take it on board and work on it. That's what I can say now. Amen. I thank you. I got you. Yeah. They were my brother. And when I, and when I question us, does anyone have any question to ask Emeka? Emeka, I asked you something before about um, <laughs> about going to is it Kenya or somewhere under AU auspices to go and represent? Uh, yes. What happened is is that um, <clears throat> can I ask a question? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, my name is Wiser. I'm I'm calling. I'm from the UK. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. In my also, I've just this is my first time coming there. Just a friend of mine sent me an invitation to join you people, and because okay. of maybe all my my stance on some of these things. In Mandi Botrilulu so na isha wocho kiongo ya bawaata. Yeah. You have been talking about meeting the elders and not meeting the elders, or customary law and not customary law. I, first of all, let me applaud your, your work. I think Biafra has been a struggle for the past, before I was born. My dad, my uncles, they all participated in the Biafra Civil War. And one of the things in the Ibo, I, we miss, I think we are kind of, misguided loyalty to our elders. And I'm saying this with all due respect to the elders. And so, okay, okay, he gone now go. So give me a car, give me a car, go to get you, give me a car, on now go, so give me a car, he got me a car. Yeah. So our elders, we must, if you look at what is going on around the world, even in the UK here where we live, if you look at the Scottish independence drive, the people fighting for the Scottish independent drives are not the so-called elders. Sometimes, oh, Okorobia may be there. How can I go? Our elders have actually betrayed us. In every aspect of it, they have betrayed the Igbo consciousness. Igbo has oh, now Whereas our people are dying slowly, our people are being castigated slowly. I am a medical doctor and I know exactly what, what I'm talking about. So I, I think we the young ones, so I am an elder in my family, you are evil elder in your family. Because the evil, the evil ideology is not based on this magisterium attitude of Iwe. As a, as a cool monkey. No, our, 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 that is the way we, we go about it. And most people who call themselves Biafra, who identify as Biafra, they have the same cultural identity. So if we want to go ahead, we need to have disabuse our mind from this idea of elders, as super elders, as in, because I have not seen anything happening. Because now, now, the, only, the only language our elders understand is the language of Naira. If you look at what is going on in Igbo land today, where the headsmen are killing and maiming our people, the people responsible for selling lands, for giving them that authority, are the elders. The people suffering it are the youths. So the elders of Igbo land should be ashamed of themselves. Some of them have done well in the past. But the present ones, for me personally, I just think 
if the young people can take advantage of the vacuum left by the elders and take the mantle of leadership and continue the struggle, I think we should go ahead with it. Secondly, secondly, the first thing I want to say is that the struggle cannot be said to be divided. If not, it can be done on their own. We can't hear you. We didn't hear you. Okay, what I'm saying is this. Our struggle can never be said to be divided. Whoever is organizing anything or doing anything in any way, we have a common agenda. That common agenda is the liberation of the Biafran land. So uh, for me, I am in support of what you are doing. But my only grind is asking the elders to lead us or to, to talk to them to lead. If they want to join us, they can join us. If they cannot okay. join us, after this struggle, we are led by young men. Okay, let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. We are not saying that the elders will come out and uh, be leading. Remember, what I showed you a letter. I said we sent when when the when the um, Australian government invited us, we sent a letter signed uh, by the, signed by the elders. The other time I gave a lecture, I showed you a letter which the British Prime Minister wrote to us. And I told you that it was in response to the memorandum which the Biafrans submitted to British government. And that memorandum said it was by the authority of the elders. That is the memorandum. That's the memorandum which we submitted to British government by the authority of the Supreme Council of Elders of Indigenous People of Biafra. Now, I told you that before they replied to us, they went home and interviewed our elders, even though we are the ones who, were, who sent this. They went and interviewed our elders before they replied to us. My brother, I, have, I appreciate what you said that um, um, uh, 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 and some of us are already elders. I am 60, and at 60, I'm an elder. But I don't know about them. I don't know about them. If the American government or the British government or the German government wants to talk about the Igbo nation, they know who to talk to. And they will be way. It's better that that person they have regard for gives you a letter. And then when you go, you say, I was sent by so so so. They can stay there and telephone the person they have respect for or they regard as the leader. Yes. There, there, there are people, they, the international community regards as Igbo leaders. It may not be me. If I Let me give an example using the political structure we have as uh, an S &D Igbo, social, politi social, political, social, cultural, however we describe it. Assuming that, assuming that I visit a country now in the name of the Igbo nation, and they know that Dr. Nyawodo is the head of Hanes, they know because it's an international figure. And they ask me, um, this your meeting or this your movement or this your journey, is it with the, by the, with the knowledge of Nyawodo? And I say, no, I don't, I'm, no, he doesn't know about it. How do you think they will feel? But if I go to a government sitting down, I say, yes. This is a letter I signed by uh, Chief Nyawodo, and he wants me to discuss with you about this. It's very simple. They will just telephone Nyawodo to confirm whether he sent me. And they will be there, whether you like it or not. So I'm not saying that they will be going around. We, the younger ones, will go around, but we need their authorization. That's what we mean. I agree that. Some of our elders have disappointed us 
But that doesn't mean that we should not give honor to whom honor is due. That is my suggestion to that question. Right. Do we have other people to ask questions? Just raise your hand, then I will give you a microphone or send a text message. I will pick it up and then give you an audience with uh, Barista Emeka and Emeka Sri. Emeka, you've not answered my question, even though you've answered other people's questions. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I would like to talk. Good evening, everyone. What is your name and where are you calling from? And my name is Susan um, from London. Oh, Susan. Yes, good day, sir. Good day. Mm. Can I call you, man? Oh, dear, man. You say, share my this program. I was actually in another meeting with Inia Wood and uh, most of our counselors in UK here. I left the meeting and I missed everything. Um, Guys, sorry, sorry. So I, I, I missed what you said and what you uh, wish I was going to meet up. And um, it's a shame that I'm. Uh, um, I missed it, and I wanted to Don't know worry. that you, you get the recorded message. You get the recorded message. That's interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um. 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 Thank you for only Zikuluku before. Zikuluku concerning elders, your elders as well. And um. And they're like a more. You know what I said to you when I talked to you one time about that I liked your emotion. Yeah. yeah. The way that you. Uh, as I was in your program, your last speech, two speech, two. Two, pre two previous ones ago, I told you about that. I test you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and that was why I. But it, I don't know how I came to join that. Uh, who sent it, the, the link, and I was able to follow it up. And today again, I found myself in the forum, and I said that I will join you guys today. Um, because um, I've been here and uh, um. Though he is a good strategy and also so of them, but he uh, need a move fast. Everybody you know this evening, I see now one meeting now. Our uh, next day, I will do my own do na conduct right. Or we mention a lot of things to us about things to when we are buying, to put in at the moment and these these problems here and there, and um. I don't know the way the way you say so this thing or to which you've been did like this for a very long time. Is there any way you can try to adjust to things to see how you can move faster? With your... Faster, faster. Is it faster? Um, yes, in your plans and sometimes searching and everything in them. Yes, yes, and uh, in years with other other people as well to join you because someone will meet you today. I wish I was able to meet some ladies. Uh, there's a lady called herself uh, Comfort Hero, and she's the director of African Crisis in the in the Afri all African crisis, to, uh, which is the worldwide. She, she was there. So it's the first time I met us, somebody like that. And we need, we need to involve people with international matters. If somebody to involve one day, now for the crisis in the Hanoi. So this lady was in charge of everyone, everyone went so which international uh, international recognized. So, but the way he says so these things, uh, I'm yeah, I'm not seeing you. I don't know if there's any way you want being to fast. change. Not yes. Being being fast. yes, and if one of you we can get to change different things with your this thing because any day any day we go on together, any day move on together. We need to meet up together. He help us with the phone I agree with you, but the issue of moving fast, moving fast. Um, I was just thinking the moving fast on the area of security, maybe you discussed yeah, with them, you discussed with them, right? Yes, yes, and every other thing, yes. I, I discussed with, you know, Dr. Nyawodo works with us. He's just like our patron. Let me put it that way. Is one of the people that are behind, is one of the elders behind this movement. And some other elders. Now, I've discussed with them over the issue of security and they are taking care of that. Yeah, I had everything you said today. You was you said so much today. Yeah, so I have discussed I have so there are certain things I have discussed with them which they're taking care of. 
ahead. The next important thing is what doctor uh, uh, suggested, which we have to move now to meet with those international partners, those countries that are with us. Mm. I'm going to talk with the elders. I said, listen, we have to move now so that they can give us authorization letter. I'm not asking them to travel. If they can travel, that'd be wonderful. But if they cannot travel, let them give us authorization. And we move. There's no country we go and sit down and say, so, 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 the elders of Hebrew land have sent us. They will not listen. They will listen. Uh, but if we go, like we always say, if you go, they will ask you who sent you. It is natural. So we will move. Like you said, we have to be fast. We'll do mm -hmm. as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have so many challenges, even to move. We have challenges to move, but mm. it's not something we'll be talking here. Otherwise, they will not say, hey, we want to use you and make money. I, mm. I'm working, I'm sweating, I'm using, I'm sweating out my living. I'm a, I'm a practicing barrister and solicitor and they stay survey and value, making mm. a living from my profession. I stay using it to serve their friends. So mm. if I start talking the difficulties we have, some mm. of you will say, hey, uh, something else. So we will work as much as we can. We can do, we just do our best. We'll move as much as we can. Mm, that's what I can say about that, about being fast. What do you, what do you think about the uh, World Ebo Congress? Because I'm part of them as well, and one of their big committees, and one of their admin as well. Yeah, they are I good. I'm with them as well. Yeah, they are good. Yeah, I relate with them. I relate with them. You know, the documents I have, I sent to them, to their platform. I'm also in the platform. So, yes, you said you are in the platform, yeah, but yeah. With, uh, one of our members looked for you, he didn't see you. One for did he contact you eventually? What the book Congress, the America? What the book oh, Congress? The one, Europe. Europe. No, the, the, the UK one can you know? Europe. Europe. I, I, I mean, that, the, the, in that uh, uh, WhatsApp group. I didn't see you because I'm one of the admin there. Eh, what happened? Yeah. Somebody removed me because it was uh, Dr. Dr. Uzoma that put me there. Okay. Uzoma. Okay. I'll ask Zubi to look for your distance because... You um, know Dr. Uzoma now? Dr. Yes, yes, I know. I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I, I had when they were arguing that you shouldn't have WIC rule, mm. that there should be no WIC rule. Mm. You should only use the WIC America. Yes, yes. You know? Mm. There's so much argument going on, yeah. We have committee going on as well. Critical committee is here and there too. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any question or we are not cast to run up now because we've been here for more than an hour? All right. If there's no other question, then maybe we'll, we'll run up. We'll run up the end again. I will say I will say that the deep pole of customary governance, which I showed you. Um it is necessary that every person gets a copy. And um, the customary government which we are running is being powered by our political movement we call MOBIN, Movement of Biafras in Nigeria. That name, Movement of Biafras in Nigeria, tells us, tells us that we are Biafras in Nigeria. Though we have made it clear to Nigerian government that we are Biafras living in Nigeria and we have the right to carry on with our movement. And Nigerian government has seen us. We participate in politics, and we, we are very strong in politics. Mm -hmm. And I will also announce that at the moment, mobbing is controlling a board in the Nugu state government. So we are right there, politicking for Biafrans. We want to put Biafrans in, in power so that Biafrans will control our region. We're not talking about federal first. We're talking about our own region first. So please, get in touch with mobbing and get other information you need from mobbing. You can write to us or you can go to the customary government website, www.ipopgovernment.org, and get more information. I will also announce that the United Nations has sent us invitation for our women to participate in the conference. Let me read it out to you. 
United Nations sent this on to yesterday, 25th of June, by 3.20 p.m. Address to info at ipopgovernment.org. Invitation letter to for NGOs in consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council at ECOSOC for the multi-stakeholder hearing. The topic is accelerating the realization of gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. So they're inviting us and the, uh, because of this lockdown, it's going to be virtual, virtual conference, but we have login details. Those are few that will participate will give you a password to log in and the, you have to present your photograph. See, they gave they an gave the example of how your photograph will be. We're going to send the whole details to your email if you are willing to participate. They are saying that um, the, the representatives trade part organization and that you should, have, you should as much as possible include youth, youth you know, you, uh, ladies that are younger because um, they want to make sure that equality is balanced. So um, those of you who are willing to participate in that conference, get to us. You can write to us. Uh, you can call Mo Mobbing Office uh, or go to our website, www.ipopgovernment.org and write, send off an email. Indicate your interest that you want to participate and we shall send these documents to you and show you how to log in we'll give you the login details to register for the conference for this at the moment you cannot travel to new york or geneva or vienna where we have seats for now it has to be conferenced by this virtual conference because of the lockdown uh, and I can, very much. There's, a, there's a lady that wants to ask question her name is uh, Makuleta. All right. Immaculata, could you ask your questions now, please? Immaculata. Yeah, good afternoon from here. Okay. Afternoon. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from South America, uh, Ecuador. Oh. Ecuador. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Dalo no Mune. Dalo. Um, Dalo. Actually, I just opened my mail and I saw the invitation and I decided to see if it's still on. Oh. Um, from the topic I saw there is uh, trying to see how we can mobilize our people to actually be in charge of our region, yes. uh, which is different region. Yes. Yeah, my question is this. Actually, we've been trying to see how we can um, participate in government like um, during the time Ojuku was uh, was still with us, uh, he floated a um, uh, political party. Okay. And, uh, along the line, uh, political party floated. Yeah, tried the little way, and uh, we were not able to do anything. We are not able to get a majority. Uh, I mean, Abga. Okay. So um, now most of our people they join the APC and so on and so forth. And a lot of things are really going going wrong in the in our region, which is Biafra region. And now we want to mobilize again, try to see how we can get in control of uh, what is happening in our region. I, I I wouldn't know how we want to go about it. Um, Following the situation of things, the way we we are being marginalized, the way um, we are being swallowed um, uh, by people that think they, they are the owner of um, everybody uh, that is in uh, Western region, Nigeria. I don't know how we want to do it. And again, um, followed by the fact that most of us, uh, because of money, they, they, they sold a lot of things out. We don't have any secret. We, uh, we cannot uh, communicate with our people without another person hearing about it. And a lot of people that have felt that um, they collect money and they, they become a sellout. So I, I wouldn't know how we are going to organize things successfully in our land. Look at the way we are being insulted everywhere. Um, the the, the Fulanese have taken over our land. 
because of the people that are our governors and so on and so forth. And uh, we cannot talk with one voice. Um, if anybody comes, uh, instead of supporting, they, they like to fight them. Um, sometimes uh, I get disappointed with most of our people. We say we have intellectuals, we are intelligent, we are this, we are that, but we can't control ourselves. And that is why a lot of things are going, are going wrong in, in our region. And it's so sad that Igbo people cannot organize themselves, the elders. If we take, for example, what is happening in the north and what is happening in the west, our Yoruba counterparts or Duduwa counterparts, even if any of them makes mistakes, they don't come and castigate them publicly. They try to gather themselves together. But in our case, uh, we say we should be our brother's keepers, but in our case, we are the one that is going to cast our people. Whatever their fault is, wherever their problem is, we don't seem to be in unity. I don't know why it's like this in our region. We don't seem to be in unity. Even uh, the elders, even the young people, everybody is just like in this array. Immaculata, Immaculata, please, could you make a okay. question short, please, because of time? Yeah, please. yeah, yeah. This is what I want to point out. And That's I okay. want to know That's okay. how we want to get okay. this yeah. thing done by gathering ourselves to get thank you to get thank you okay so my sister uh, your observation is uh, is in order and that is what we are trying to rebuild a lot of things have gone wrong yes but we must rebuild we must rebuild it's not right to continue crying and weeping and lamenting over these things the best thing is to start rebuilding the structure that has been broken down that is what we are doing now we want to unite our people, we want to discipline, we want to make our people to come back to that our original norms and values, where there's discipline, there's orderliness, there is that love and unity, there is patriotism towards Igbo land. So we want to come back to that, that same condition. A lot of things went, went, went wrong, but hopefully we shall rebuild it. And uh, you're asking how is it possible that we can control we can, we can, as we rebuild now, as we put us together, join us together, we shall rebuild Ibo land. I, I, I bet you we shall. <laughs> All right. All right, my sister. I don't think there's any other question. So please get in touch. You can email us info at ipopgovernment.org or uh, um, or you can you can call Mobin's office. 081-81-830307. Mobin Secretariat at Enugu. 081-81-830307. Or 0706-803-1111. O seven O six eight O three one one seven six Mobbing Secretariat at Enugu and they will guide you. That is what I have now for you. Moderator, do you still have any other thing to say? Uh, please begin to round up and summarize so that we can be able to uh, bring the meeting to an end and then uh, so that we can be able to like, um, yeah, let's yeah. round up now, please. Well, yeah. um, Emeka, sorry. Emeka, I want to say something there. Okay. Um, I want us to maintain statistics of participation in all the meetings. If you look at the meeting today, it looks like um, the number that I used to attend uh, is not up to. Today, so seven, we have 17 members here. Okay. No, it was 19. Last yeah. meeting was how many? I will check the, the statistics for last meeting. Yeah. Okay, now leave that. Uh, I know we still have 15 more minutes, but my question, I won't ask it today, it will be next meeting. Okay. Um, I, uh, I am very happy. The explanations today are very, very cordial and interesting. Uh, may God help each and every one of you. Why I am insisting on knowing the attendees is because we need to disseminate the information to too many people and be able to know whether we are moving forward in that direction or not. But by the special grace of God, next meeting, I will package my questions because I have to ask about, you made mention of, uh, you know, uh, non-availability of, indirectly you didn't mention it, but it relates to non-availability of fund to 
pursue their goal. Then uh, I will come up with uh, a suggestion because we won't be waiting until when funds are available, which you will make public. There must be a situation or a, 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 an arrangement how we can fund this. We know that all these things consume money. Then whether it is 10 Kobo or uh, 20 Kobo, there must be an avenue to contribute financially to help you. Because if at the end you come and tell us why you didn't achieve this because there was no fund, I don't know how they will look at it. So by next week, I will package my question. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Thank you SAG. You've uh, spoken very well. Uh, in the absence of any other question, uh, Barisamika, could you begin to um, round up and then summarize? Well, um, we have said, we are talking about um, using our customary law to organize ourselves. And um, I think we have spoken so much about it. Um, um, the next thing is taking action, going ahead, implementing what we have discussed. Um, we have a structure. Please, I will say, send your email to us so that we can give you documents and give you guidance. Yeah, yeah. When we say organize ourselves, organize ourselves. We need to be organized. Now we are going to the next level. Under the customary law, do you know that you have right, what you call ambassador in statute law, also oppressed under customary law. You can have a representative of your people in another country, even though you are not yet independent. All these things happen. We have all the system, all are co complete, but we need to start implementing them. And how do we do that? It's only when we come together. So send your email address to us so we can keep you informed. You become part of the what we're doing. Set up the, the customary government town hall meeting in your place because we are using town hall meetings, town hall meetings to organize ourselves in all the cities where you are, the states where you are, the countries where you are, you organize town hall meetings of all the Biafrans, whether in the diaspora or at home. That's how we disseminate information. And then we, if you need to talk, to speak to the government of your country, it is you, some of you in that country, that will bring a letter from the elders and say, please go and discuss on our behalf. And then you go and present the document and speak on our behalf, you know? So please send your email addresses to us so we can send information to you. And we move as a team, as a body. Other things will definitely be worked out. Um, other structures, administrative structures, financial and uh, all that things, they will all be worked out. But the important thing is to be one first and move as a, as a people with one mind focused to the mission and we shall attend it. I think that is the summary I can bring for now. Um, if there are other things, this lecture continues every 6 p.m. on Saturdays so that um, if you still have other questions to ask, there are still time for you to ask your questions. That's all I have for now. Moderator, I think um, that's all for, for now, unless you want to add any other thing. Thank you. Right. On that note, I now bring the meeting to an end and then we'll reconvene again next week, Saturday by same time and then same platform. Uh, we'll before I forget, I think next week, Saturday is 4th of July, right? I think so, but I'll check the calendar. Okay, the because there is somebody who said that they would like us to match the meetings and that they were going to talk about roadmap, the roadmap to Biafra actualization. Because there's somebody from another platform or another group who challenged me and said that I'm deceiving the people by using this, this uh, legal and uh, political diplomacy, diplomatic process, it will not work. So then I said, okay, if that's the case, you are challenging me, okay, go, let us all gather on the 4th of July. Every person come and show us your roadmap to Biafra actualization. So if it's on 4th of July, that means it's going to start around 5 p.m. because it's going to be long long discussion uh, the two the people will now bring their roadmap since they said our own roadmap is not good 
let them present their own roadmap and count our own. It's like a debate or a kind of brainstorming or debate session that day. So that's what I, I want to point out to you. Okay, we'll still have to send the circular out and then maybe let yeah. people know yeah. about the, the meeting and the time. Is That one is not yeah. a problem. Yeah. So until then, uh, the meeting now is now closed for now. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.